cataractcoach.com. The eyewall haptic tears the posterior capsule. How would you recover from this complication? Let me show you the case here. We'll start off by just showing you the rexus here. Video sped up a little bit, and then we'll cut ahead right to the end of the case here. I just want to show you that the rex looks pretty good. Tripan blue has been used to stain the capsule, and looks like a reasonable rex is coming around here. A little close to the periphery for my taste, probably a little bit too big. And now let's see, completing that capsule. Now going too small on the rexus. So this is something you definitely want to practice. You want to be able to get a really nice capsule rexus here. This one is not exactly centered, but it's not terrible. I'll take it. It's a reasonable capsule rexus. Reasonable. But the issue here is going to come to the end of the case. Now you can see how it's decentered and it's not the ideal size. You could have done a better rexus than this. Come on. Come on. Bring your A game. Let's forward to the end of the case here. Cleaning up the capsule bag here. There you go. By manual INA. Very nice. Clean capsule bag. Poster capsules intact. You think, hey, I'm home free, right? Right on. Now remember, three-piece IOLs have haptics that are different than a single-piece IOL. And they're different in that they're thinner. And that's how we're allowed, we can place them in the sulcus, right? Because they are so thin. They're not big, bulky haptics. But because they're so thin, they also can easily poke and penetrate the posterior capsule. Remember, for a normal eye, typically for a human, anterior lens capsule is around 14 microns thin. That's two red blood cell diameters. The posterior capsule is about a four microns thin. Four in the center. That's half of a red cell diameter. Remember, red cell diameter is about seven and a half microns. Watch carefully. Lens going in. Here's the three-piece lens, and let's watch, let's watch. There's the first haptic, not the 7L. Where's the 7? So trying to rotate it around, and let's look, let's look carefully, and there's that point hitting right in the post, hitting, hitting the capsule, right there. There you go, now you did it. And it's just like, the eye is such a beautiful but a wimpy organ that, you know, anything can cause an issue here. So now let's watch carefully. We got it in the correct orientation on the 7L or anti-S rotation. Let's get that trailing haptic in and let's look carefully. And you'll see that um, not gonna be ideal here. So getting that, nope, still not in. Trailing haptic still not in the sulcus or the bag. And let's see what's gonna happen here. Trying again with that Sinsky hook. At this point, you may want to put more viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. That'll just give you a lot more working room. The AC won't be as shallow, and you won't be as prone to causing these, these issues here. So let's see what's going on here. Just kind of, I guess, looking with the chopper or the Sinsky hook. I wish the microscope was centered, but again, it's a resident case, so come on now. Let's get that dialed in. There's that trailing haptic. Not quite. Let's see. And at this point, you probably want to put in some Triumph Synalone. So checking the incision. You can see if there's any vitreous prolapse. See if it tends to move the iris. If it does, you may have to do a vitrectomy. Let's see. Suture. Okay, suture going in. I definitely think a suture is a good idea in a case like this where you have a suspected issue here. But at some point, I'm suspecting that there is going to be some vitreous prolapse that's going to need to be cleaned up. And that can be done, of course, with a bimanual approach. 23-gauge instruments would be great through two pairs and pieces incisions. There's the main incision. Obviously, the video sped up. But let's see. Cut that suture, and let's see what else is going on in that anterior segment. And so there's the big suture, not as rotated. Here's the vitrector going inside the eye, just kind of cleaning up anything else that's remaining. And... Oof, tough case. Yeah, triumcinol would help a whole lot here just to make sure there's no vitreous prolapse. Luckily, it is a three-piece lens, so this sulcus placement is an easy option. You don't have to worry about that. But it just goes to remind you that, you know, these eyes are such wimpy, beautiful little organs that tissues are very fragile. And even something as benign as you think as the IOL can end up rupturing the capsule bag. But I want to commend this young doctor as a resident surgeon from South America for doing a good job and recovering nicely. And the patient actually had a pretty good outcome.